being around kids, if you see the red flags, then question it. There were definitely red flags out there, but no one questioned it when I was a child. And so I would say, if it's the neighbor's kids, if it's your kids or whatever, question those red flags. If you have a, a gut feeling or a bad feeling that something may be going on, then explore it. Really just any person that has a substantial time with a child where you get to know their ins and outs, their rapport, their, their how they are, where you say like, I want to be able to observe, I want my gut to be able to take over, I want to be able to see this child and understand if there is a behavior change, if there is a drastic characteristic uh, that, that sticks out to maybe there is abuse, and that's good and we need you to do that, but at the same time that has to be followed up with education. These are the places people should touch you. These are, these are where you should feel safe. This is how you can outcry. If someone does touch you, this is what you should do. And follow that up with just the reinforcement and encouragement of the truth of saying it's not your fault. Everybody has a role to play to say you are valuable and you are important um, and you matter. And the more that we are coming together and talking to children, the more likely they are to find their own voice and feel like they have the right to talk. The disclosure process is the way in which children both experience child abuse and tell or reveal the secret of child abuse in their life. It can look very different for every single child. Similar to the grief process, children can move from various stages of the disclosure process and in different time frames than every other child.